All right, guys, let's get some MLB plays and props for Monday, June 3rd, slate of games. Try a cyclic for leaderboard. Have to start us off. Yeah, guys, I went 1-0 today on the game picks. That's because I gave out the over 8.5 total runs in the Diamondbacks versus Mets game. It came out hot. Uh, I think it was seven runs very early in that game, but we needed up until the ninth inning to hit the over. But, hey, uh, you know, that's why they say it's not over till the fat lady sings or something like that. Yeah, I don't own one day. Yankees first five minus a half. We had a chance. Uh, we uh, we tied it up in the fifth inning. We had runs on second and third. DJ LeMahieu, I think he struck out, maybe grounded out in the top of the fifth. Did didn't really matter. Uh, I think the Giants scored two in the bottom of the fifth anyway. Blake Snell, he was not good. Nestor Cortez was way worse than him, though. Um, just some bad luck late in the game, or late in the top of the fifth inning there. So, own one day for myself. Trey, let's go to the props. How do you start us off? Yeah, guys, I went one and one on the props. That's because I gave out for my batting prop, Cattell Marte, over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs versus the Mets. Marte, he had eight total hits plus runs plus RBIs. Even had two dingers, led the game off with a dinger. Shout out. Marte and then my pitching prop Jake Irvin under five and a half strikeouts versus the Guardians Irvin he barely hit the over finishing with six total strikeouts yeah I think that came out of three and a half though uh oh the strikeouts did yeah <laughs> yeah we we were a little off on the line but yeah it came out of three and a half you had the well, under though right yeah well either way it didn't hit okay yeah all right I was just making sure because people were asking uh this morning but yeah I went one and one as well uh Fernando Tatis Jr. Not a whole lot of runs scored in that Royals game. He finished with a single. Uh, I thought he was going to get up again in the ninth inning, but uh, we were one batter away. So uh, 0-1-1 there with Fernando Tatis Jr. And then Brian Bayo, under two and a half earned runs. He played pretty well through the first four innings. Had a lot of traffic to work through in the fifth and sixth inning, but he got through it, had a quality start, only gave up two runs. We went 1-1 one one on the day there. Trey, let's go to the plays for tomorrow. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm excited to talk about my play today. Yeah. That's because it's – uh, kind of going over the same exact game that I talked about yesterday, uh, but it's going to be a little bit different because the pitching matchup is a lot better. It's going to be this New York Mets going up against Washington Nationals game, uh, and this should be a fun game to watch. Both teams, they've been kind of average this year, and they're kind of throwing out uh, a little bit of average pitchers. The Mets, they're running out there, Tyler McGill, and McGill, he has an 0-2 record, but he does have a 1.69 ERA in a, in a flat one whip. And Miguel, he's enjoyed a resurgent season so far, even though he's only started in three games. So uh, we'll have to see if he keeps it up here. And the Nationals, they're throwing out McKenzie Gore and Gore. He has a 4-4 four and four record and a 2.91 ERA, paired with a 1.28 whip. And this is the best season for Gore so far. He's ranked in the top 20% of the MLB in a few key advanced stats. And I'm going to take the under here in this game. Give me the under 8.5 total runs here. I believe that both pitchers – are going to continue to be consistent here in this game, especially since this is a game between two teams that are not very high scoring. They only combine to score an average of 8.17 runs per game, which is already under this number. And with these two starting pitchers that we have, we should see them held below their average. Give me the under here of eight and a half total runs in the Mets versus Nationals game. Yeah, I like that one there for you, Trey. Uh, for my play today, I'm going to be looking at the Padres going up against the Angels. We've got a couple strange arms on the mound in this one. The Angels rotation is taking a massive hit. Patrick Sandoval continues to be bad. Reed Detmers continues to struggle. Detmers was actually sent down to AAA yesterday. And today, the Angels are going to be throwing out Tyler Anderson as a starting pitcher. I'd probably say he's the most reliable arm they've got in the rotation, coming in with a 2.47 ERA. I just think the Padres are a much better team. The Angels haven't been able to put up a lot of runs this season, and we're going to have Matt Waldron on the mound with that disgusting knuckleball. I'm going to take the Padres here on the money line as they play. I'm going to break down Matt as my player prop, so I'm not going to talk about him, but Tyler Anderson has had some problems, even though he's coming in with a 2.47 ERA. The first problem is he plays for the Angels, and he doesn't get a lot of run support whenever he pitches. The second problem is his control, having 14 walks over the last five games. He's coming off a game against the Yankees where he had six walks in just five innings. He's given up a total of 29 walks already this season, and he's given up a lot of hits as well. He's just pretty good at getting himself out of jams. The Padres have got a pretty good, decent lineup all the way through with the hitting, and I do think they're going to be able to put a few runs on this Angels team with Anderson on the mound. We probably just need three uh, runs in this game to get the win because uh, Matt's been pitching really, really well lately. I'm going to take the Padres here on the money line after that Royals collapse yesterday as to play. Trey, let's go to the props. Have you start us off? Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Alec Bregman here, and I'm going to take him to go over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs going up against the Cardinals. I love this over for Alex here in this game because I think we're going to see him have a day at the plate. That's because of his matchup against Kyle Gibson. Gibson, he's ranked in the bottom 20% of the MLB and expected ERA, expected batting average, and barrel rate. So I think Brakeman's going to 
big side to square one up in this game. And that's because these two, they faced off in 23 career at bats. And Bregman, he has a 304 career batting average and even has two dingers against Kyle Gibson. So uh, that makes me believe it's going to be a pretty good game for him, especially since he's already averaging 1.72 hits plus runs plus RBIs per game this season, which is basically right at this number. But with him being placed at the number two hole in the batting lineup, I think that he's going to get a lot of opportunities to hit the over for us. So give me Alex Bregman to go over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs against the Cardinals. Yeah, I like that one there. Uh, for my batting prop, same game. Give me Paul Goldschmidt over 1.5 bases going up against Verlander. I've not been a fan of Verlander this season. I've been pretty open and honest about that. I think he's a little bit over the hill. He's still getting a lot of respect because of his name, and he's a future Hall of Famer. He deserves that respect. But every time that I see him, I'm going to try to attack him with somebody else. Justin Verlander, he does throw his fastball an average of 93 miles per hour, but it takes a significant drop off the second and third time around going against these hitters. And he throws that fastball 50% of the time now uh, whenever he's on the mound. He's coming in with a 3.26 ERA. And if we take a look at Paul Goldschmidt, he's really been struggling this season for the Cardinals. He was terrible a month ago for the Cardinals, but now he's batting a respectable 222, even though that's really bad for Paul Goldschmidt. He has been better through the last month of baseball and over the last 10 games. And over half of his hits this season have come against the fastball. He's hitting the fastball 239 this season and the curveball 250. Justin Verlander, he throws those two pitches 80% of the time. His expecting batting average is even better against those two pitches. And I think Paul Goldschmidt is going to find a way to turn the season around sometime soon. Hopefully it's in this game against Verlander. I'm going to take him here over 1.5 bases going up against Verlander. I just think he doesn't have enough left in the tank to continue to be good uh, this season. I don't think he's got enough arm left in the tank to go a full season in MLB. So give me Paul Goldschmidt here over 1.5 bases as the play. Trey, let's go with the pitching props. Have you start us off. Yeah, guys, I'm going to go with Tyler McGill. I talked about him in the pitching prop, or I talked about him in the game pick section, and I'm going to go with him in the pitching props. I'm going to take him to go over uh, his 15 and a half outs versus the Nationals. I love this over for McGill in this game because I think that we're going to see him pitch pretty deep here, and I believe that for a couple reasons. The first reason is because of McGill himself. I said he's only pitched in three games so far this year, and part of that is due to injury, and he's averaging right at five innings pitched per game, and uh, he and he does need to pitch in five and one third to hit this number for us. And I believe that he's going to do that because he's coming off his best start of the season against another team besides the Dodgers. And he dominated the Dodgers in seven shutout innings. And I think that he's going to kind of carry that momentum here into this game against the Nationals, especially since Washington, they're not very high powered. They only averaged 2.23 runs per game in the first five innings which is ranked in the bottom 10 of the MLB. So I think that McGill's going to come in this game confident, and he's going to smash the over. Give me Tyler McGill to go over 15 and a half pitching outs versus the Nationals. Yeah, I like that one there, even though it's against my Nats. Uh, for my pitching prop, I already touched on it. Matt Waldron of the Padres to go over total strikeouts going up against the Angels. Not entirely sure what this strikeouts are going to come out at because if you take a look early in the season, he was not striking out a lot of people. But over the last few games, he's been striking out a lot of people, and the knuckleball has been working extremely well. I'm assuming it's going to be 6.5 strikeouts. He struck out six plus in four consecutive games. That's probably going to continue going up against the Angels in this one. The knuckleball is the reason I'm taking him to go over his strikeouts. It's absolutely disgusting now. He throws it 38% of the time, and usually what he'll do, he'll set you up with a fastball, go to that knuckleball, maybe throw it again, maybe set you up with a fastball to close you. He's got the hitters rocking like a horse right now. Early in the season, he was getting lit up by that knuckleball, but it's disgusting now, and he's only been able to hit it at a batting average of 160 over the last four games, and you can tell he's building confidence because he was throwing that knuckleball 25% of the time early in the season. Now it's up over 38%, so he's throwing it 13% more per game. A confident knuckleball pitcher, maybe the hardest guy to hit in an MLB game. I'm going to take his over strikeouts in this game. He's going to dominate again. He means over 6.5 strikeouts as the play. Trey, let's go with the graphic. Have you start us off. Yeah, guys, I went with the under eight and a half total runs in the Mets versus Nationals game. We're getting an interesting pitching matchup here, and I believe that's why Tyler McGill is going to hit his over 15 and a half pitching outs versus the Nationals. He's going to go deep. He's going to hold the Nationals to a low number, and I believe that McKenzie's score is probably going to do the same thing to the Mets. So low scoring game there. Also going with Alec Bregman to go over one and a half hits plus runs plus RBIs against the Cardinals. He's near the top of the Astros batting lineup, so... Uh, he's right in between uh, two stud batters. So we just need him to get a hit, and something good's going to happen. And Tyler? Who? Tyler? Oh, I uh, parlayed him with the uh, game pick break. Oh, my bad. I wouldn't listen. <laughs> Idiot me. All right, my bad. I'll take the Padres here. On the money line going against the Angels, I think they're like minus 130. Uh, if you want to play the first five, I also like that one. I'm going to take the full game in this one. 
I think uh, I think Waters is going to pitch really well in that one. And Matt Water will be my over strikeouts as a play. I think it's going to be 6.5, but if it evens up to 7.5, I'm still going to take it, whatever it comes out at. They beat Paul Goldschmidt, over 1.5 bases. I don't trust Justin Verlander. Paul Goldschmidt, I know he's been struggling, but he's got to heat up soon. He's one of the best hitters in baseball. He's been that way for the last five or six seasons. So he's going to find a way to turn around against Verlander in this game. Guys, that's going to do it for the MLB Picks and Props for Monday, June 3rd, Slate of Games. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. See you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Well, we also have 12,000 subs coming right around the bend. We're at 10,200. We're going to give away two tickets to anybody, to any game they want, NBA, NFL, college basketball. It doesn't matter. We can wait until the new season for NFL. Any game you want to go, whenever we get to 12K, we're going to have that uh, giveaway coming up as well. Leaderboard. We had multiple questions this morning about how to become a member for the YouTube channel. Let's do that really quick tutorial. You're going to go to YouTube.com. You're going to go to Bears Profit Plays. You're going to search it in. You're going to hit our thing. There's a join button right just to the right of the subscribe. You're going to click that. There's two options. You have the Bear Pack for $4.99. That gives you access to YouTube member plays. And then you have the Bear Pack Gold for $7.99 a month. That gives you access to our member plays on YouTube. And it gives you a one-month membership to our website, BearsProfitPlays.com. So if you get the Bear Pack Gold, you save yourself 2 bucks a month. A little bit cheaper if you want to do that. But that is the tutorial for anybody that needed it. We had multiple questions today through email about how to do it, and it wasn't working. But if you want to know, there it is right there. Trey, 